What's going on guys? I'm Mike Murtis and on today's edition of Gamer Logic, we're going to go through my entire box collection of Nintendo Entertainment System games. Let's do this. So welcome guys, I thought I'd mix things up and do something I haven't done in forever, and that is go through my entire inventory of NES complete inbox games. And I figured as I'm pulling them down, I can check and make sure they're in inventory, but I thought, hey, this would make a great video. Why don't I go through my entire collection and talk about some of my favorite boxed games and games overall, and eventually we will do other collections. Maybe next time you guys want to see Genesis boxed games or SNES box games. Hell, I'll even do like PlayStation and stuff like that. But the Nintendo Entertainment System was really where I got my start into wanting to play and collect video games, even though I had experience with the Intellivision and Commodore 64, the NES was my system. So what better way to start? So I'm going to pull these games off the shelf back here as I go. So I'll break up the video in kind of chunks, basically. It'll be one long video, uh, but I will get up. So there will be a couple cuts here just because I don't want to bring everything down at once. So without further ado, let's check out the first batch of NES games I have here. And this one is actually a recent acquisition. And this is Double Dragon on the NES. Double Dragon 2 to be exact. Um, probably the best NES Double Dragon game that there is, period. Played a ton of this with my little brother. Had a great time with it. Um, if you haven't played it, it is a challenging game. Multiple levels of difficulty. Just a great co-op game. A definite improvement over the first Double Dragon, uh, mostly because you could play two players at the same time. Even though the punching and kicking system was a little weird at first, depending on what direction you were, it switched on you. Um, I still had a lot of fun with this game. Found this recently at uh, Disc Replay in Rockford, Illinois. Had a um, loose copy, and I wanted to upgrade to complete in box. The price is right, so I figured why not. Here is, on uh, Release the Power, Demon Sword on the NES. Talk about some misleading artwork here. You got like Conan the Barbarian sitting in front of this. It does not play like your typical Barbarian Dungeons and Dragons warrior game, not in the slightest. It actually plays more like the uh, Legend of Cage, or I believe the proper pronunciation is Kage, where you're running through forests and other areas, fighting ninjas, fighting monsters, and basically trying to uh, put together a blade, if I remember correctly. Um, I don't quite remember where I got this one. This was probably one I acquired a, a number of years ago, but definitely funny for its misleading box art. I remember going through comic books all the time and seeing the cover for this being like, this does not look like what uh, the cover is showing at all. Well, you can tell that I grabbed stuff from the D section of my NES collection. Complete in box copy of the original Double Dragon. Double Dragon, the first NES game that I ever rented. My dad rented this for me. Um, for longtime channel viewers, you'll know that for whatever reason, as a very young kid, I thought this was the, the Karate Kid, which that would be its own very different game. But uh, challenging, if very different. A lot of people bag on this game constantly this is dino wars on the nes um i think it's not a great game by any means but it's not terrible uh basically you run around with a little character eventually get into your dinosaur and keep progressing from stage to stage stage to stage i remember there was a poster of this in like one of the first issues of nintendo power magazine that i got i thought it was cool i thought it was fun for some reason i thought the music was decent in this this is one i have to revisit but uh Talk about a really like mint copy of this game. This uh, this was actually a sealed game when I got it, if I remember correctly. And a few years ago, I finally cracked it open. And yes, it still had that new game smell. Cybernoid from Acclaim. Uh, admittedly, I do not think I've actually ever played this. And if I remember correctly, this is actually a game that I think was on uh, PC systems. 
actually, like a DOS game or something like that, and they eventually ported it over to the NES. I could be wrong on that. I don't think I've ever actually sat down and played it. And now that I think about it, it was uh, I think this was a Commodore 64 game originally. But uh, yeah, Cybernoid, the fighting machine, international video game hit. So there you go. From Acclaim, masters of the game. Ah, complete in box copy, original black label, Excite Bike for the Nintendo Entertainment System. This is cool. Um, I love this game. It's so simplistic, but it takes me back to uh, the local Rosati's Pizza that I used to go to as a little kid. And they had the arcade version of this. Fun game, simple, but classic. Ah, one of my first RPGs, Faxanadu. This I really love the music for. This is one I rented constantly. Um, I think it was my cousin David that actually took me through the rest of this game because I was stuck very early on in the game. And I remember a Nintendo Power hint was that you could spend your money a certain way. And I think if you managed to work it out to have zero gold after the king gave you money and you spent everything, he would give you money again. So it was like a nice way to really add up stuff. But uh, cool game. Eventually I did beat it. This is one I really want to revisit. And the cool thing about uh, these games, these early Nintendo games, is that it has that classic NES art to it like they had in um, The Legend of Zelda and Zelda 2. This really well-drawn, cool-looking art. And that is in the instruction manual for this. I'd love to break out all of these games out of the boxes and show you the manuals, but it would literally take me hours to get through everything. Here's another game that I have love for. Rented the crap out of this thing. Uh, coming back to it, it's not great, but uh, still holds a very special place in my heart. Dr. Chaos. The beginning of this game, the intro to this game, with a little character running through the house. Man, is it creepy. The beginning music is cool. Unique game. Definitely a unique game. From the side-scrolling portion to the warp zone portions, and then the first-person uh, perspective where you're looking for warp zones or items. I always had a blast with it. Coming back to it, yeah, it's not great. Kick-ass artwork on this with uh, Michael, if I remember correctly, fighting all these monsters. Uh, you know, trying to basically, I think, drink a potion and someone's interrupted him. But cool game. Just cool game. You can't have an NES collection without having Dr. Mario or Tetris. I definitely have Dr. Mario. I, I'm actually wondering if this was when they started bringing these games back out because I seem to recall when they started throwing the Nintendo Entertainment System logo on the top of these things, like you see here, that uh, this was towards the end of the NES life cycle. Uh, this is a complete box copy. This Condition-wise, it's okay. Box-wise, it's got a little bit of sun fading on it. You can tell the difference there, but uh, still fun game overall next we got another one from taito here that uh, i'll admit i don't remember where i got this thing but uh, it's called dungeon magic the sword of the elements and it almost looks like a wizardry kind of deal it's a 3d journey uh i, I don't remember the other 3d dungeon crawler that acclaim put out uh, swords and serpents now that i remember that um, I have not played this game. It's from Taito. This might be one I have to put on my list and see what it's like, because uh, maybe it's uh, better than I think. Possibly. Maybe. Ah, ha, ha. This, to me, folks, is my favorite Dragon Quest slash Dragon Warrior game. I know that's not saying much, considering there's so many other versions on there, but uh, for me, I spent countless hours playing the crap out of this game building up my experience points writing to nintendo power magazine for hints so i could finally defeat the dragon lord and i did so um you know pretty easy to come by a complete box copy of this game especially considering nintendo power was giving them away with a subscription but uh classic one of those few games that my sister played with me man we loved this game all right let's uh, grab some more shall we all right, here's one that uh, I am not a huge fan of the complete game because it's absolutely impossible. I'll never forget when I did a stream of it and people got pissed off that I had invincibility on. I just wanted to see my way through the game. It's Fester's Quest, The Addams Family. Um, good music, has Blaster Master elements, just pretty much impossible. There's a really good Retronauts episode on that. Uh, that one I grabbed for super cheap many, 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 many years ago at a garage sale. 
light gun game. This is Gotcha the Sport. This is another one that uh, was one of my early rentals back in the day. Uh, just your regular zapper game where it's uh, it's paintball. A couple different levels. You know, it's been a long time since I've played this. I think it might be time to hook up my NES or my Famicom and hook up a light gun and check it out. Dun, 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 dun. Golgo 13, the top secret episode. Um, I'm a huge Golgo 13 fan. I have both games. I've seen all the animes. Um, just totally dig this spy. He's a badass, right? Um, again, an early title that I rented on the NES. Didn't get very far on it the first time I played this, but I'll never forget uh, going into the hotel and they kind of show the woman and Golgo get together and go down and the lights go down. I always ask my dad, like, what's going on there? And uh, now that I think about it, I don't remember what he said. I think they just said they were kissing or, or, or something like that. But, you know, seeing it now and watching Golgo's health go up when you go to the hotel, it's, it's, it's kind of hilarious. This game, The Guardian Legend, uh, talk about another misleading box tile. It's cool box art, don't get me wrong, but not what you expect when you're playing the game. I love this game because the f music in it is just freaking phenomenal. Um, I've never finished this game completely by itself. I've done the password to do all the shoot 'em up levels, but never the entire journey. This is one I wanna get back to. Now I got the theme song stuck in my head. Speaking of theme songs, the Goonies 2 on the NES confused the hell of me, out of me because I thought there was a Goonies 2 movie. Turns out that they just made a sequel. It was just with a game. Classic, classic. Again, one I rented the crap out of. The music when you're walking in the rooms just haunts me to this day. So many different secrets and pieces of equipment and everything you get. I spent hours on this thing. A classic. One I will definitely revisit someday. G.I. Joe. This is the Atlantis Factor. Um, eh, I actually prefer the original G.I. Joe game on the NES over this one. This one's got a lot of cool characters and stuff. I uh, don't remember where I grabbed this one from, but when I grabbed it, it was actually the first time I played it. Uh, it's a decent game, and uh, this is coming from a G.I. Joe fan. Back to the light guns. Freedom Force. This was a, another early rental for me when I first got my NES, and it's another Zapper game. Uh, I, I thought it was cool. My dad thought it was cool, you know, shooting people out of an airplane, making sure that you don't hit any of the prisoners. Ton of fun. Sunsoft Classic. Here's a little bit of a underrated game in my mind, and this is Fox's Peter Pan and the Pirates. Great cartoon series when it was on Fox 32 back in the day. Um, this, I think, is actually a fairly easy game. I remember powering through this game in one night, essentially, but uh, it could just be the uh, nostalgia talking, but uh, I, I had a lot of fun with this when it came out. This is a newer game. This is Haunted Halloween 85, a fun side-scrolling beat-em-up. This one you can pick up from uh, Retrotainment Games. They uh, sell their games online, and of course they uh, sell them at conventions too. They're always at the Midwest Gaming Classic. I believe they got a game coming out in the future called Full Quiet that looks really awesome. Cool game. It is followed by its sequel, which I have here, Haunted Halloween 86, which I think I actually have to sit down still and play this, but uh, you know, tighter controls. I think there's multiple characters and stuff you can go through. Pretty fun from that regard. Ah! A real classic here, folks. Final Fantasy, the game that started it all. There was so much coverage of this game in Nintendo Power Magazine. It includes the 84-page Explorer Handbook plus full-color monster chart. Great, great, great game. Lots of classic memories for this. Takes me back to uh, summer, a really early summer playing that. Next up, we have Sean Connery here in The Hunt for the Red October. Eh, it's This is an okay game. Um, I use okay loosely. I don't remember having a lot of fun with this game when I rented it. I think I like the movie a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, this one's got some sun fading on it. I think, as you can see, uh, the red doesn't completely add up. I'd have to check and see if that's the case. Time for another stack of games. Holy crap, do I have a lot of NES games. Okay, back to the collection here. Uh, first up we have 
Iron Sword, Wizards and Warriors 2. This was the first Wizards and Warriors game I've played. These games were all right. Um, I know there's some really big fans of the game. I always thought they were really poorly balanced and a little obtuse as far as what you're actually supposed to do. Of course, this one is famous for having Fabio. I can't believe it's not butter on it. Ah, great game here from SNK. This is Iron Tank. And this is one of the first games I ever requested at a rental store for the rental store to actually purchase. Great music, fun gameplay, awesome bosses. Highly recommend this one if you haven't played it. A favorite for sure for me. Infiltrator. Man, I saw this in Nintendo Power Magazine. This is this Mindscape was actually like right in my uh, neighborhood. This was in Northbrook. And uh, seeing this in Nintendo Power Magazine, I thought it looked so cool. Uh, this, again, is a port from, I think, a Commodore 64, as well as a couple other systems out there. The concept is cool, the fact that you flew a helicopter, that you infiltrated an enemy base, and that uh, you were trying to get in and get out. I, uh, I thought this was really cool. I rented it once and thought the helicopter portion was impossible. Um... Overall, not a bad game. I think you can use a password to actually get past the helicopter scene, but uh, maybe that's another one I'll come back to. I remember me and Rick, my buddy Rick played that on a stream, and we were laughing our ass off at the back of the box description. Akari 3, The Rescue. I think this is a fun co-op game to play with people. I think this is better than the arcade version. Very different from the first and second game, the first and second game being a shoot 'em up This is kind of a uh, top-down beat-em-up. Pretty fun. Ew, Akari Warriors 2, Victory Road. A lot of bad memories with this one. Got this cheap back in the day. I think this was actually kind of a buy one, get one, please take me kind of deal. Uh, just a horrific game, and, and that's not saying much because the arcade version isn't that good either. Akari Warriors, the original Akari Warriors on the NES. Eh, it's okay. Uh, kind of a cheap port. Can't get past the game unless you use the uh, ABBA cheat code for Unlimited Continues. You can get stuck with things. Um, I think this was a game that me and my little brother wanted to whip across the room multiple times because we could get stuck in places. Uh, one of the first arcade games I remember playing in a place called Woodstock Ice Cream and experiencing rotary joysticks for the first time. Underrated, in my opinion, Quantum Fighter. Uh, great soundtrack to this, challenging, fun side-scrolling action. This is one I used to see on Video Power all the time that kids would grab. Cool game. Journey to Silius, the game that was originally supposed to be the Terminator, turned into a Sunsoft classic. Perfect example of the great things that Sunsoft did on the NES. Great music, great graphics, great gameplay, challenging, so, so good. One of my favorite NES theme songs is the theme song to Journey to Silius. Jeopardy 25th edition, I mean, it's Jeopardy. Ooh, another classic from Hudson Soft. This is Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu. Fun action platformer, great music again. There's a TurboGrafx-16 version of this, but I think this is the definitive version overall. Perfect length for stages, perfectly challenging. Used to rent the crap out of that one. Legacy of the Wizard from Broderbond. And uh, this is another challenging one. This one could be extremely obtuse. I have gone through this game and actually finished it completely, but it took a very, very long time for me as a kid to do so. Uh, fun game, though. The Last Ninja. I know this is a lot of uh, a big classic, this whole series is, with folks on the Commodore 64 and other computers. But uh, I think the port of this on the NES kind of sucks. This was, uh, I think I got that at a garage sale. Bouncing back from crap. We are going to Life Force, which is a classic side-scrolling Konami game. Shoot em up, two players, 30-man code can be used for it. Great music. Played this so many times. Crazy. Coming from the computer, the first time I played Kung Fu Master was on the Commodore 64. This was one of the first games I got uh, after I got my NES for Christmas. And uh, Kung Fu is just awesome. You know, it's simple, it's simplistic, but it set the tone for many side-scrolling beat-em-up games after the fact. Has a really catchy theme song, though it doesn't have much after that. Still very cool. 
Kickmaster from Taito. Again, this was late in uh, the NES's life cycle here. And I didn't realize that Taito American Corp was in Wheeling, Illinois. So many of these game companies were right in my neighborhood. It's crazy. But underrated game. It's got lots of cutscenes, lots of power-ups. Very challenging. Very fun. Now to grab another stack. All right, I'm actually going to run out of batteries and have to let a battery charge before I can finish this video. So I'm going to try to get in as many as I can before my camera cuts out. First NES game my dad bought me, Ninja Gaiden, a classic. The whole series really means a lot to me. Just wrote about this, the second and third game in Old School Gamer Magazine, the July issue. Go check it out. Great music, great cutscenes, blah, 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 blah. You've heard me talk so much about Ninja Gaiden. Same thing with Ninja Gaiden 2. Very happy to have a box copy of this. I do not have a box copy of the Ancient Ship of Doom. I do on a Famicom. I actually have a whole trilogy set of Ninja Gaiden on a Famicom, but not for uh, the NES. Got to keep your system clean, right? And what better way to do that than with the NES cleaning kit? I don't know why I bought this. I think it was like 99 cents. It was complete in box. I had to have it. Difficult game, but cool. This is Mission Impossible on the NES. Great music. Uh, it's a Konami game. Don't think I've ever finished it. Tough to do so and fun to play. Ah, another NES classic. This is Metal Gear on the NES. This actually has the original Kmart sticker on here for $37.97. Um, you know, a lot of people bag on this version of the game, but to most North American kids, this is what we knew Metal Gear as, and that still holds a very special place in my heart. Next up, we got Metroid here on the NES, another classic, started many, many series, put the blueprints for a lot of series. Um, the interesting thing about this, and I will hold it up to you here, is that this says that it's a two-player alternating game. How is this a two-player alternating game? Very interesting in that regard. I guess I kind of made a mistake there. But this was a classic. Uh, my cousin David let me borrow Metroid and uh, always had fun with it. Box copy of Mega Man 4. This is where Mega Man actually started getting to be a little long in the tooth in my opinion. But uh, overall, a pretty fun game. Ah, here comes a super classic. Maniac Mansion on the NES. Oh man, I still have a video of me opening this up for my birthday many, many years ago, along with some other cool gifts. This is one I've talked about to death too, but a fun point and click adventure game. To me, the definitive version of, Ninja, uh, of uh, Maniac Mansion. I know people say it's censored. None of the censorship actually affects any other gameplay. Magmax, uh, this was a cheap one I picked up a couple years ago. This isn't a great game by any means. It's passable, but uh, it was cheap. It's okay. I have some memories of it. Uh, this was one that was in Nintendo Power Magazine, featured pretty predominantly. This is the uh, the magic of Sherazade. Uh, that is not how you pronounce it. Uh, to Sherazade, I think that's right. Anyways, uh, this is only a game that I've played briefly, and uh, believe it or not, this is actually a sealed copy of the game. I just have to put uh, a little protective cover back on. But the reason this is still sealed is because I have another copy of it. Uh, this was like 13 bucks I picked up a number of years ago, and I figured, hey, why not? One of these days we'll crack it open. Next up, we have the sequel to Galgo 13. That is the Moffat Conspiracy. Another great game. They really enhanced the original Galgo 13 with this. It was more playable, controlled a lot better, still had a lot of variety with it. Great music and a really cool ending, in my opinion. Definitely worth checking out. <laughs> Legendary Wings on the NES. Uh, really great port of the uh, Capcom arcade classic. Um, I think I've told this story before, but this is extremely embarrassing, so I'll go ahead and tell it again because, hey, that's always fun. Um, the, <laughs> the music, when you die, it plays this little theme song, this oh, game over theme song, right? Um, it used to make me cry. I have no idea why, absolutely no idea why, but it would totally make me ball, and for years I did not play this game because of that. So, weird, totally weird, totally stupid, but just so funny. So, it's time to grab another stack. I think my battery's good enough to last for one more stack before we gotta switch. 
All right, this was actually one I picked up at uh, Midwest Gaming Classic just recently, and this is uh, Splatterhouse on the NES. This is a reproduction. Originally, this only came out on uh, the Famicom. I don't remember what the Japanese title is. It's a fun little 8-bit Splatterhouse game. Uh, a lot of fun there. Power Punch 2. This is a complete in box copy. Got this super cheap. I think this is one of the more collectible games these days. Uh, this was supposed to be the sequel to Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Never happened. They put this game out. Kind of sucks. It doesn't come anywhere close to Punch Out. The real Punch Out is, of course, this one right here. Sort of. This is the re release of Punch Out. Mike Tyson's Punch Out is the classic. All they really did with this was do a palette swap. Uh, so it doesn't look like Mike Tyson anymore, but classic games spent a lot of time playing this. This is one I, I always love revisiting Punch-Out, just because I still know all the secrets and stuff like that and constantly learn new things. Puss in Boots, Hero's Great Adventure, a super simple game. You can get through this fairly quickly, but it's a cute little side-scrolling action platformer that uh, I think has gone under the radar. And uh, this exposed me to Puss in Boots overall. I remember my uh, mom coming home with a tape of uh, Around the World in 80 Days, I think it was, with Puss in Boots. And me and my little brother used to love that. My little brother used to, of course, used to call it Piss in Boots, which is hilarious and probably a, a huge fetish of somebody, but uh, moving on. Super Mario Brothers 3, talk about a classic game. Everyone remembers the Mario Mario commercial with all the kids screaming Mario, and when they zoom out, Mario has taken over the face of the planet, literally the face of the planet. Um, man, always had fun with this. This is from a Challenger set, so of course it's got this big ass sticker on it, which is ugly as hell, but I think the aesthetic is cool. I don't have the seal. This is one I play all the time, so I didn't need a perfectly mint copy. Ah, fun, fun, fun classic. This is RC Pro-Am. This was only a single player game, but I spent a lot of time playing this. This was one that my dad loved to play too. P-O-W, POW, Prisoners of War from SNK. This is another one where I think the NES version is better than the arcade version. Of course, the arcade version was two players. This one pulls the Super NES Final Fight and only lets you do one player. But overall, fun, great music, great challenge. Definitely recommend it. Just building a small barricade here of NES games. Pac-Man on the NES? Enough said, it's Pac-Man. Super, super classic. Love, 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 love the music to this game. Love the music to the second game too, but the first one is the best one, Power Blade. Man, this was one I rented a crap load. This was featured in Nintendo Power Magazine. Great side-scrolling action. Fun challenge with the bosses. Fun game overall. This game right here, this game, the first game, the second game, um, I collect video game vinyl soundtracks, and I wish someone, either Taito would do it officially, or someone would do a bootleg of it. I'd be all over that. Do we have enough time with the battery to do some more games? I think we do. Let's grab some more. If I can. All right, we went to the top of the shelf and we're at the A's now. Fun, fun, fun arcade port basketball game here. A basket brawler, I should say, and that is Arch Rivals. The NES game's a lot of fun. Um, cool characters, cool artwork. You could pull people's shorts down, which I thought was hilarious. Pretty fun. Alpha Mission from SNK. Uh, it's a shoot 'em up. It's not great, but uh, it's it's decent. Speaking of SNK, great games that they put out. Baseball Stars is a classic. Even if you weren't a fan of baseball, this was fun to play. I love this game. Bit of an underrated uh, game, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Um, this is one of those games where if you play the Famicom version of it, I think they've changed stages. Uh, they changed the order of some levels and stuff too. This is probably one of the earliest games that I can actually remember finishing in like one sitting and being pissed at how easy it was. Air Fortress on the NES from HAL America. Uh, this is an okay game. This is one I used to see advertisements for on TV like freaking crazy. And I always wanted to pick it up just because um, they promoted it to death. Never played it until just recently I picked up a boxed copy. And uh, it's a decent game. Alien 3 from LJN. Uh, this version is okay. I actually prefer the SNES version of it and the Genesis version of it. But it's neat. The music is kind of fun. It's very Commodore-ish with the music. 
bad dudes. Uh, this is, uh, I think, a pretty decent arcade port. Um, I had the Commodore 64 version, which was total crap. It was all right, but uh, this isn't too bad. I, I think this is another instance, though, where you couldn't play two players at once like you could the arcade version. The Adventures of Bayou Billy. Tough game. Really the best version to play of this is Mad City on the Famicom because it's not as difficult. But the game had a lot of unique as aspects to it. Driving, shooting, side to side, uh, beat em up, side scrolling, beat em up. Lots of fun. Uh, great music. I actually have the vinyl soundtrack of that. Pretty fun. Asta Yenix. Uh, again, I probably just butchered that, but I don't care because I don't have a lot of battery left. Great side-scrolling game, kind of in the vein, cutscene-wise, of Ninja Gaiden. Uh, another game with some great music. We still have more battery. Let's grab more games. Bases loaded to the second season. Uh, you know, as a kid, I was a bigger baseball fan than I am now, but I thought this was pretty fun. A nice Zelda 2 clone. This is Battle of Olympus. Great game, great challenge, great music. One I used to rent oftentimes, actually. You want a quick story on this one? I remember renting this. The first time we rented it, we got Little Caesars Pizza back in the day when Little Caesars Pizza came in these long trays, right? It wasn't the boxes. It was these long trays. It was like pure pan pizza. I got so sick. My grandma was over. I actually remember just like whining with how bad my stomach hurt. It like totally made us sick. Um, and I think my mom read me the instruction manual to, to like make me feel better the story and my grandma got upset because it was talking about like Greek mythology and gods and my grandma was very religious um, and thought that was like sacrilege talking about it kind of funny oh man one of my favorites on the NES Bionic Commando the challenge the music the universe so 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 fun was glad when they brought out rearm great game it's another one that needs a vinyl soundtrack release Speaking of great games, Blaster Master, authentic arcade action, it says on here. Even though it never came out on the arcade, here it is. Again, um, music always gets me with games, but Sunsoft always had great music. Fun game, great bosses, brings me back to the original Nintendo Power hint about throwing grenades at certain bosses and hitting start. So cool. This is one I truly need to play more. Uh, I got this probably about 10 years ago for about two bucks. And it's a fairly rare game, I guess. It, it uh, at least commends a high price. Complete in box. This is Bucky O'Hare. Um, I was never really into Bucky O'Hare, the cartoon. I think he was just kind of one of those, uh, you know, Turtles ripoffs. I know a lot of people like it. Uh, this is a Konami game that I really just have to sit down and play at some point. Captain Skyhawk from Milton Bradley. It's an okay game. Uh, you know, I've come back and played it now, and it's not as fun as it used to be when I came to it as a kid, but not bad. Uh, admittedly, this is one that has not been opened. This is... Uh, uh, Castellar? I'm really butchering the names today. Good God. Sorry, guys. Uh, this is one I have actually not played before, and I, again, this is one I got, like, super cheap. And I think this one might have been resealed because there's a label on here that says pre-played, so at some point i got to open this up. Um, the Summit of Castilian. I don't know why I wasn't able to read that before, but here you go. Castilian is the correct name. But, uh, looks interesting. You can detonate your powerful D-bombs, whatever that means. I'm just going to cover all three of these at once because I can talk your ear off about the series. Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse, Simon's Quest, and Castlevania. Great side-scrolling action games. Of course, the uh, Castlevania 2 was the second game I rented after Double Dragon. It's what made me experience Castlevania. I fell in love with it. My sister got me Castlevania 1 here for Christmas. Loved it. And of course, Castlevania 3, uh, one of my favorites on the NES. This is not an NES game. This is Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. But uh, I have it next to the rest of my Castlevania games because it fits so well. So I'm going to move that. Great game here. This is Clash at Demon Head. Is this sealed? This is sealed. This is a sealed Clash at Demon Head. Uh, one of my favorite games. Of course, it's a little obtuse, but the cool anime style, the cool, cool gameplay some decent music this is pretty fun and uh, I did not realize that I had a sealed copy of this I have a loose copy as well so one of these days I'm gonna have to pop this open 
the Rolling Thunder ripoff, but that's okay. Capcom knew what it was doing and still a lot of fun. Codename Viper, complete in box. Eh, fun game. And I think we still have some battery life for some more here, so let's do it. All right, I got like a shelf and a half left. Right out of the box, Snake's Revenge. The sequel to Metal Gear, the unofficial sequel to Metal Gear. A lot of people, again, uh, crap on this game. I actually just did a video of this not too long ago. This was really fun. A lot of variety. They took everything that was fun about the first Metal Gear on the NES and made it better. Lots of variety. I like it. Skater Die is an NES classic. Its theme music kicks ass. And there's a lot of variety of this. Me and my little brother used to play the crap out of this game. Got the downtown and the, the half pipe and the joust. Just a ton of fun. Silent Surface. Uh, this one's okay. A nice little submarine simulation game. Again, I think this is a port from a Commodore 64 or other computer from that era. Not too bad. My dad got more of a kick out of this game than I did. Excuse me. Shadowgate, the ultimate creepy NES game. Lots of fun with this. I'll never forget the first time we rented it. We couldn't get through the first door on the inside of Castle Shadowgate. And we called the rental place and told them it was broken. It wasn't until I got an issue of Nintendo Power that I was able to get further and eventually figure it out. Even though I think I still had to write some letters to Nintendo Power. Rollerball, pinball game. Not much to say about this one. This one's okay. Rocket Ranger. You know, I don't actually think I've ever really played this game. This is one I got super cheap. And uh, to be honest, it, it kind of looks like crap. Maybe I'm wrong. One of these days, we will check it out. Maybe we'll check that one out together. Robocop, cleaning up the crap in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, this is, was a decent game. It could be hard. The, the end levels are kind of cheap. But uh, overall, this was one I rented a lot. I loved Robocop when I was a kid. Rescue the Embassy Mission, unique game. Uh, I believe, again, this was another port from a PC. Uh, fairly easy to get through. This is one you can finish in like eight minutes. I have a special place in my heart. I love Rambo, and I actually don't mind the NES game. Lots of exploring. Uh, yeah, very confusing, but man, this was one I would rent a lot and have a lot of fun with. Uh, Side-scrolling adventure game, if you will. Red Racer 2 on the NES. It's a sequel to the original Red Racer. Better backgrounds, stuff like that. Uh, but overall, lots of fun. Do we have some more battery? I, I think the battery is going to last. So we're going to pull this really close. Let's go get some more games. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. Super Mario Brothers 2. Hey, I know it's a little different from the traditional Mario formula, but I loved it when I was a kid. I love this box art. It's just so, so nostalgic for me. Super Glove Ball. I was actually talking to the one of the vendors at uh, the VG Summit. He was trying to get me to buy a Power Glove, and I just haven't uh, bit the bullet yet. And I thought this would be really cool to play with the Power Glove. This was actually fun to play uh, just with an NES controller. Sadly, I do not have the original Contra on the uh, NES, at least in complete and box form. I do as a loose game, but Super C um, is pretty fun, and I'm glad to have a box copy of this. Just more Contra fun. Strider. This was a difficult game for me, uh, and still kind of difficult, even when I revisited it recently. My favorite thing about Strider on the NES, the opening theme song to the game. Star Tropics on the NES. This is a classic for many reasons. I had fun with this game. Um, I rented it, and this was probably very common with other people. You get to the point where you get the sub, and the sub needs to be able to submerge to get further uh, as some sort of like copy protection. It would be cool. Um, they gave you a, a piece of paper from your uncle that you would dip in water to get the code. Well, the rental store didn't give you that, so either no one got that far, um, and actually another thing about it, no one at the store that I was at got that far because my save was the furthest. So basically, I got as far as you could get in this game without that piece of paper. Star Soldier. I think, uh, yeah, this is another like weird cover art with this one. This one is super weird. Um, just to kind of shoot them up. I don't have much to say about this one, honestly. 
Spy Hunter, I actually love Spy Hunter on the Commodore 64. The NES version is okay, you know, it has the music and everything. It's pretty um, arcade authentic, it's just, it's an okay game in my opinion. Solstice on the NES. This is a notoriously difficult game. I don't think I've ever finished this. 250 rooms to explore. An exciting new game for devoted NES players. Cool music. Solar Jetman. Eh, uh, I, I don't really like this game that much. It's never really impressed me. We still have enough battery for some more. Alright, this is timely because today the trailer for the new Top Gun just came out. Top Gun 1 and 2 on the NES, the second mission having a two-player mode to it, which my little brother would always cheat and kill me by holding the control pad a certain way and launching a missile. God, that used to make me so mad. To the Earth, a fun little light gun game. Uh, lots of good music in this one, if I remember. Maybe it only has one song. Ah, Time Lord on the NES. Um, I beat this game with a Game Genie because I could not get through it by myself. This is one my mom brought home for us. It was a nice surprise. I just wish the game would have been better. My mom tried, though. It was still really cool of her to bring home an NES game for us out of the blue. Tiger Heli by Taito. Another classic game. I believe this was an arcade game as well. Does it say it's from the arcade? Yeah, the top arcade hit. Fun game. Tetris. Man, as I've grown older, I loved this game more and more. Back in the day, eh, I thought it was okay. A fun rental. Everyone loved Tetris, though. Though Everyone that was around me played on Game Boy. Target Renegade. Eh, just uh, okay side-scrolling. Beat him up. Double Dragon beats it pretty easily. Super Team Games on the NES. I believe this is a power pad game that you can play. Uh, it is a power pad game, and I do have a power pad. Uh, just okay. Tag Team Wrestling from Data East. Doesn't hold a candle to Tecmo's wrestling, but not bad. And look at that. I still got some more time. We're just going to make it here, folks. I have five minutes to cut this through, so hopefully it doesn't cut out. The original Wizards and Warriors on the NES. Uh, again, this is one that I got pretty cheap. Not a huge fan of the Wizards and Warriors franchise. Second one's better. Vice Project Doom. Great game. Uh, basically like a sci-fi Ninja Gaiden. Uh, guns, driving, cool cutscenes. Very fun. Ultima Quest of the Avatar. Admittedly one I have not played. Trojan. Complete box copy of Trojan. This one's alright. Uh, decent arcade port. Track and Field and Track and Field 2 on the NES. These were fun. I uh, liked playing these with my sister, my dad, and my little brother. Total Recall. I remember my cousin babysat me once and rented this for me from Blockbuster. And, uh, you know, it, it's... Eh, it's not great, but uh, it's got its secrets that you can learn to get past things. Um, he played this game with me for a while, and then we went downstairs to play Raid Over Moscow on my Commodore 64. Star Tropics 2, uh, so does Revenge. I am actually looking forward to finishing this one day. I have not. Zen, Intergalactic Ninja, uh, Kat, uh, Konami Classic, just one that I haven't gotten really, really far in. Lots of variety in this one. Oh, man. Both Zelda games. So classic. I'm so glad that I have box copies of these. These are the gold editions with all the maps, the instruction manuals, all of that stuff. Um, very, very, very classic games that uh, warm my heart. Yoshi's Cookie. Okay, puzzle game. Xerxes. This is one that I'm really glad I have a complete box copy of. Very unique. Very fun. Uh, and I, I think uh, one of my Facebook friends really, really enjoys this game. Xavius, uh, another uh, shoot 'em up. This one's okay. And finally, Xenophobe. Uh, I, th I like this version better than the arcade version. I was never a fan of the arcade controls, and the NES version, if I remember correctly, seems to control better. So. Wow, um, I have a gigantic stack of NES games in front of me, and I'm so shocked that the battery actually held out. So it kind of blew through quickly here. This was probably a really long video, so if you stuck with it, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what games you liked out of my collection, and what system in my complete 
collection that you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching, folks. Peace.